Hello, my name is Matteo Manzi and today I'm presenting you the work Orbit Anomaly Reconstruction Using Deep Symbolic Regression, supervised by Professor Vasile. I will start uh, giving you the context and motivations behind this work and uh, give you the problem statement. After that, uh, I will present the methodology we propose to solve the given families of problems and the associated results. Finally, some conclusions. So the context is the one of data-driven dynamical systems in which we aim at autonomously discovering governing equations from data using techniques such as machine learning techniques. The goal is to construct uh, interpretable white box models with uh, both generalizing and extrapolating capabilities. Of course, here we focus on uh, data-driven orbital mechanics. Here are a number of works we are building on, uh, the second one being a work we presented earlier this year. Uh, which uh, was based on uh, genetic programming based symbolic regression. We are now combining this with sparse regression described by other works. It's worth mentioning that other techniques are coming out but are building on different assumptions from our own. So uh, we start uh, uh, stating that uh, in general a second order differential equation uh, describing a non-autonomous system can be transformed into a first order differential equation uh, with an autonomous nature, uh, with a couple of transformations uh, at the expenses of increasing the degrees of freedom of the system. We will make use of this later on. So, in our problem, we start uh, with a number of snapshots of observations of uh, the system, of the state of the system, and uh, assuming these are tractlet like observations, we can uh, construct uh, via finite differencing uh, uh, the state derivative. Uh, uh, of the system. Uh, we can make use uh, of this data to autonomously identify anomalies in orbital mechanics such as uh, optimal control maneuvers, atmospheric density fluctuations due to space weather events, and behaviors resulting from space debris impacts. So the first ingredient is the sparse regression technique uh, starting from the low parsimony also known as Occam's razor. Um, which is used as a guiding principle to build uh, interpretable parsimonious models. Uh, the idea is to use parsi to promote techniques. More formally, uh, the assumption is that the governing equations of the physical systems of interest are sparse in the space of all possible functions of the state. This is described in the equation below, uh, stating that uh, the coefficient uh, matrix is sparse. Uh, theta is the matrix of the function, the libraries of function describing the system. So usually, uh, uh, and uh, that's what's done in this work as well, uh, we estimate the values of the coefficient using the sequential threshold least squares algorithm. This is a fast convex method and it's useful in uh, leveraging uh, the uh, linear nature of the linear combination of uh, the terms of the acceleration. Nevertheless, uh, uh, while it's a robust noise, uh, uh, this technique has some problems with the nonlinear parameter estimation, making use of uh, local optimizations sensitive to initial guesses. Also, it's not obvious that the choice of the library functions, the, the functions library, uh, describes fully the dynamics of the system. That's why we introduced symbolic regression, uh, which is a method uh, that fits data using symbolic expressions. And uh, starting just from individual tokens of uh, nonlinear or linear functions, uh, variables, uh, uh, that is time, uh, velocity, and position, and uh, constants, which appearing inside nonlinear functions are nonlinear parameters. Uh, usually, symbolic regression is combined with genetic programming, and in particular, making use of strongly typed genetic programming, we can introduce vector specific operations and the associated uh, genetic operations, uh, the, most importantly the crossover and mutation. As mutations we're using the shrink, insert and replace node functions and the crossover is basically uh, exchanging subtrees inside the tree-like structure of the individual randomly. So this technique naturally handles nonlinear parameters and while being expensive is parallelizable. Uh, nevertheless it's prone to refitting. So it should be clear at this point how the two techniques are somehow uh, complementary. And that's why we develop what we call here deep symbolic regression. So what we're doing is uh, describing a symbolic uh, regression algorithm in which the individual is a list of trees, so a list of functions, that can be used to identify 
the theta matrix to be used for the sparse regression part of the algorithm. So again, the main steps are the construction of the list of functions, the individuals of the genetic programming algorithm. From there, an optimization to estimate the nonlinear parameters appearing inside the trees of the genetic programming part of the algorithm again. And using this, we can construct the sparse regression and estimate via the sequential threshold at least square the value of the linear parameters. In this way, we can at the same time leverage the, the, the power of linear analysis when the, uh, in, in the parts of the problem that are linear while maintaining the power of the symbolic regression part of the algorithm. So to perform the outer optimization, we make use of the objective veneer, uh, which is, uh, in our case, uh, approximated using uh, uh, the given observations, using the Simpson rule. So uh, here are some results, uh, the first one being a time-dependent and model force uh, as a pertur perturbing term. And this is simply a dumped spring with a forcing term. Uh, we give the observations given in the figure on the right. And uh, using the al algorithm, we are able to correctly identify the linear parameter, the F0 term. Uh, you can see the low value of the fitness. Of course, uh, we also correctly identify the relation between the velocity and the position and the behavior of the time with respect to itself. And uh, we also, at the same time, we are able to estimate the correct uh, value of F2, the, f the, the symbolic value of F2. In fact, you can see here that F2 is correctly identifying the oscillatory behavior of the perturbation associated to the F0 constant. At the same time, because we're using a list of individuals, uh, uh, some individuals are not appearing directly in the equation because the linear coefficients uh, estimated to, through the regression are uh, estimated to be zero. So another case, uh, we complicate the shape, uh, uh, the functional shape of the perturbing term, uh, introducing a state dependence, in particular dependence with respect to the velocity. And you can see the behavior of the system on the right and the related observations. Again, we make use of the same algorithm and we are correctly able to identify uh, the behavior of the system and the governing equation in a white box model. You can see the low value of the fitness and the correct identification of the F0 function given here. Uh, here I'm not giving again the, the, the functions associated to the to a value of zero of the linear coefficient. Finally, an orbital mechanics case, which are which we are all mo most interested in. Uh, we are taking into account uh, time-dependent, explicitly dependent uh, uh, drug perturbation, uh, which is uh, time-dependent in the sense that the attitude of the spacecraft is changing and the area is changing. Uh, you can think about a tumbling object in space uh, uh, as a result of an impact. And the behavior is depicted on the right. We make use of the same algorithm and we estimate the behavior of the system correctly. We are able also to identify the uh, functional shape of the, ra the tangential acceleration uh, due to this tumbling behavior, the F0 term uh, on the left. Associated to this, we also have a low value of the fitness. Uh, which is higher than before because of the longer time span over which we are integrating, but which is nevertheless low. And the correct uh, uh, approximation of the nonlinear parameter. Uh, here it's worth noticing that uh, we were not able to identify the radial component of the acceleration because of its low value. And we are currently looking into techniques uh, to uh, change the units of measure uh, assuming low values of the measurement noise to estimate even low amplitude perturbations and uh, be reconstruct the functional shape. So in conclusion, uh, GP-based symbolic regression can be successfully combined with sparse regression techniques and it can be used to uh, perform in tandem the construction of a sparse dynamical model and nonlinear parameter estimation. Finally, we can uh, investigate uh, the constructed model to infer the causal nature of the observed phenomenon. Here you can see also the future works and uh, I look forward for your questions.